Good morning. Stand to your feet this morning and let's praise the Lord. Amen.
sing your praise, Jesus. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. And we remember that you are God and that we are your sheep. And Father, we thank you for your unfailing love and your faithfulness from generation to generation. And we thank you, Father, because we can sing again, no matter what we go through in life, we will sing our praises to you, God. Oh, sing his praise again. Oh, sing his praise again. everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you've got breath here today, you should be praising the Lord. Psalms 98 verses 7 and 8 says, let the sea resound and everything in it. Let the world and all who live it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the mountains sing together for joy. Now listen, if the mountains and the trees and the rivers and all of creation is praising the Lord, how much more should we be? And listen, it says that they sing for joy. For joy, You know, there have been times in my life when I haven't really necessarily felt the joy. And I, dep I depended on whether my praise should be according to how happy I was. That's a lie. Let me tell you something. Your happiness can come and go. But when you have the joy of the Lord, you can praise Him all the time. I have a few reasons that you can praise the Lord. You know, sometimes your feelings will lie to you and say, oh, you don't have anything to praise God for today. That's a lie, too. Psalms 145, starting in verse 8, it says, The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. That's a promise. If you're praying for a lost loved one, that's a promise right there. All you have made will praise the Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts. Your glory is an everlasting kingdom, and your domain endures, or your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises. He is loving toward all he has made. He upholds all those who fall. All those who fall. If you've fallen, he'll uphold you. He'll bring you back up. He lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at their proper time. You open your hand, and you satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of of those who fear him and he hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him. Now listen, those are a few reasons that you can praise God today. Because the joy of our Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And if you're lacking on a little joy today, we have communion in both, uh, both corners over here. Listen, go and remember what he's done for you. Go and remember how he shed his blood for you and how he is loving toward all he has made. Let everything that has breath today praise the Lord. Come on, church, just lift up your voice all over this house and just worship and praise his name. He is worthy of praise. Come on, come on, just lift up your voice unto the Lord. He is worthy of praise. Let, feel this room, fill this room with your praise to God. 
for heaven to worship Jesus. Sing it with us again. And my husband said, oh, maybe that's Jesus. Maybe he's fixing to come. And we talked about it. You know what? One day, he is going to split those clouds. And we're going to be gone so fast. People are going to know what, they are not going to know what happened. And you know what? They'll talk about it. Oh, my goodness. The news, how the news will spin it. And then after a while, they'll forget about us and they'll go on. But then all hell is going to break loose. So, you know what our, our command is today? To win the lost. It's our job to win the lost. My husband is studying a message. He said, I'm going to preach a message on the tribulation. So people realize what their loved ones are going to go through if they don't. You know, he said, he said go into the hedges and highways and compel them to come in. Whatever you have to do to get them here, to get them saved is our command. Amen? Amen. Because heaven's going to be amazing. Oh, no. Heaven is amazing. Yeah, it's already there. Yes, it's amazing. God bless you for being here today. If you are our guest today, we ask that you be seated. And our ushers are going to bring you a card and we want you to fill that out take it to the coffee shop. They have a gift for you today. Spring First family, will you welcome those that are being seated today? Welcome them today. God bless you.
Pastor said, Reese's is over. Good morning, church. So many people here. That's amazing. Just happy to see all of you all. All right, church, it's time to worship God through his tithes and our offerings. And we do that cheerfully. Amen, amen. We're going to have the ushers come up. And uh, if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And we'll get you one of these uh, envelopes to fill out. Um, I was asking God about, you know, today's thought for, for the offering. And I thought of something that's said between us as, you know, humans, as people that work. You've, if you've heard this before, I'm sure you'll know it. Like, everything goes up. The price of everything goes up. Except for what? What's the saying? Except our salaries. <laughs> except our paychecks. Gas goes up, food goes up, diapers goes up, everything goes up except our salaries. But that's not true, though. That's not true. That's not the way God intended it for you. That's not. Let me read something for you. John 3, uh, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, do you ever think that God intended for you to just get to a certain level in your life and be done and say, hey, you've had enough blessings, you've had enough miracles, you've had enough of the presence. We'll stop here. This is where you're at. But the intention was that you continually prosper. And so I think of uh, something Pastor David taught us during SSM where we, we talk about money and passing the money test. And oftentimes that means at the, initial, at, at, at the beginning of your financial walk with God is at first that you trust him to be obedient, that you be obedient with your tithes. That means giving unto God the 10th, 10% of your income. And then as you progress, you start learning the joy of giving offerings. But that's, you pass that test, you would think, that's it, I passed it, I'm done. But the whole point is, as your soul is prospering, you're going to benefit. Your finances are going to increase. And can I tell you something? That money test isn't a one-time occurrence. It continues to grow. It continues to go. How many of y'all know that, you know, it, when your kids are small, you hand them a dollar to take it to school, you're not too worried about them losing or misspending that dollar, right? It's a dollar. They have small character, you give them small money. But as they get older, they get teens, then you bust out with the 20. And you're like, okay, well, hopefully they'll bring me some change back. <laughs> Not going to happen. Same thing, it goes with us. I believe it with all my heart that as God, as we pass that money test, God puts us in a level of finances that our character can handle. Because I can tell you something, it's not the same managing hundreds of dollars as it is thousands of dollars, and then as it is hun handling millions of dollars. I believe with all my heart, there's a test at every level. And, I, and what I heard in my heart, God say, tell them, there's a test before you. This is not, I'm not, we're not asking for anything specific. We know, you know the projects we have, the Mac Room, our church, missions, Fire Bible, all those things, we have them. But the message is for you to understand that there's a challenge that God, Holy Spirit, has been putting on your heart. And it's not a challenge to scare you, but it's a challenge to take you to that next level. It's a challenge to increase your finances. Something that happened to me several years ago, when I first I gave a sacrificial offering, my wife and I gave it for the first time. We had never done that before. And then... A few months later, maybe two, three months later, something in my business, we started experiencing really amazing growth consecutively for like four or five months, just an increase in our profit. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I can't believe it. How long could this keep going? And then before you know it, I realized I had a lapse. And I can tell you now this, there was a lapse in business. And then I panicked. I started worrying. I was like, Lord, what did I do? Am I... Am I in sin? Did I do something wrong? I'm tithing, I'm giving. But I realized for that two-month period, because it only lasted two months, I realized that I was so focused on the money. 
I was so focused on this next level that I forgot about him. I was being obedient. I was doing it lovingly. But man, I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. Wow, that's a lot of money. Instead of saying, wow, how good you are. And as soon as, I kid you not, church, as soon as I got over it, how much it was, I said, Lord, you know what? You've been faithful to me. You'll never fail me. And I thank you for this. And I took my focus off that. Things went back. And then they started increasing. And I now know that as the certain levels come, there's tests. It might be, you know what? It might be increasing your offering level. It might be increasing on your missions giving. It might be honoring that faith pledge. Whatever it is, God is trying and working his way with you to take you to that next level. Don't be afraid, church. Don't be afraid. Your soul is meant to prosper. Your soul is meant to prosper and everything. I pray, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. I'm sure that does not limit your finances. I am positive that that does not limit your finances. So today, church, give and check your heart. Check your heart. Sometimes we write checks. It might be a small test that you have. Sometimes we write checks. We give offerings like robots automatically, and we don't even do it cheerfully. That's a test. Remember to always give cheerfully. Remember to always give because you're not expecting anything. You're just so grateful for what he's done. You are grateful and you want to return just an act of, of gratitude towards him. So I tell you right now, I know this is for somebody. It's for everybody. But I'm, if I'm being honest, some of you may not answer this. But I know the Lord is saying, test me and see how good I am if I will not open those floodgates over you. I don't know what that is. That's between you and the Holy Spirit. It may be, you know, actually giving all your 10%. If you're doing, you know, 7.5, 8.5, 9, it's not quite the 10. If you're, you know, dropping dollar bills, $5 bills in the offering, and you're expecting thousands of dollars in return, come on now. We're not in the 1960s. I mean... <laughs> You can probably take your DeLorean, take $10 and go back to 1960 and buy you all kinds of milkshakes and good stuff with $10. But nowadays, it takes more money than that. So let's pray. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that you are faithful. I thank you that you are good, Lord. And everything that you ask of us, Lord, it's not, it's not to take it away from us, but Father, just to increase our level, God that we can continue to pass the money test, that we can continue to be faithful. And as this refiner's fire burns our, our, our love for material things, our affections for possessions, our affections for our bank accounts, and let our affections be on you, God, that you are always faithful. You'll never leave us. You'll never abandon us. And especially when it comes to our finances, Father, as we trust you in the level that we are now, Father, you increase us. And when that next level comes, Father, and the tests come, that we will pass it with flying colors because our eyes are gonna be focused on you, Lord. I pray, God, that everyone here who has heard it in their heart, they know what it is. You've dealt with them. You're not, you're not telling me to do something new. You're just asking me to remind them what you've already spoken to them about. And as they pass this test, and they accept your challenge, Father, that they will be increased with such blessings that they cannot contain. Father, I pray that you bless every family, every business, every household, every person who is going and giving their tithes for the very first time today, Lord. I pray, God, that you show, just show them how awesome you are and what it means to, to know that you are our provider. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Spring First family, we are so happy that you're here with us today. We want to take some time to let you know about a few events that are coming up here at your church. First up, our Pleasant Hills Children's Home Christmas wish list has arrived. 
please see the table in the foyer if you would like to sponsor a child and or an adult. Next, Halloween hotspots are coming up at the end of this month. This is an awesome opportunity to get to know your community. You can sign up and get more info in the cafe. Also, there will be student-led prayer every Monday at Spring High School at 6 a.m. near the front doors. Come pray for our students, our staff, and the community. And lastly, it is Pastor Appreciation Month. Let our senior pastors know how much you love and appreciate them. Bring a card next Sunday and an offering will be taken. That's all we have for you today. We love you and pray that you have an amazing week. morning. What, a, what an awesome day of praise and worship. Jesus is in the house. Can you say amen? I thought we were just going to have to run away with the, that when that song comes on says, oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. How many of you want to praise him? It's, it's a day we could praise him. Can I just tell you the church should be the most excited place you're at in this world today. This is not the day of gloom and doom, even though there's some gloom and doom. When the Lord is on your side, you're a winner. When the, when the Lord's on your side, you are, you are in the driver's seat. And this is, this is the day, say it with me, this is the day the Lord hath made. We must do what? Rejoice and be glad in it. But what is there to rejoice about? Jesus is coming soon. Listen, friends, if, 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 God, uh, if, if, if you can't get the message that he's coming soon, if you know anything about the Bible, everything that's happening in our world is signs of the times. And I know we've heard that all of our years, all of our years, signs of the times. But listen, it's never been, it's never been more evident than it is now. Jesus is coming soon. This is not time to play, play, play around. This is not time for religious activity. Just going the status quo. This is time to be uh, on fire for the Lord. One of our young people years ago came home from youth camp, all excited, fired up for God. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm just hot for God. <laughs> it's time to be hot for God. I want to preach this morning on the subject of walking, walking in purity. Um, as, as, a, as God's church in our, in our world, you know, as, you, know, you know, we live in such a funny day, in my opinion, if I could just say that. We, we, have, we have so many, so many uh, things from uh, your phones and social media and text message and Instagram and Facebook and you can, you can get up every morning and just find out what mood every person's in. You can find out what's going on at their job. You can find out what's going on with their weight, their breakfast, their car. You can just, you can just, you can almost just go through and know who to stay away from today. <laughs> Hello? Cra crazy times. And you watch, you know, in the news, you don't know what to believe in the news. So, you, you know, people are really just kind of, you talk to people, they're just kind of abandoning the news. Because you don't know, you don't know who to believe or what to believe. You can pretty much tell when they're lying, their lips will be moving. <laughs> That's a pretty good sign. And they tell you things that you know that can't be true, but they, but they say it with with such passion, they just think, wow, this has to be true, you know? But the church is different. You know, the Bible says, come out from among them and just be separate. We, we ought to be the most enthusiastic thing in the world. And I think, I think Spring First is on, on the verge of, of being that place where, where people can find their answers in this day. Can you say amen? amen? Through praise, through worship, 
through his word because we've read the back of the book and we win. But we have to stay faithful. There's a race to run. There's a, there's a, there's a path to walk. There is a, uh, and it's not just something that we walk alone. We must invite everybody to take the journey with us. We must, we must not just say it on Sunday. We must live it on Monday. We don't just pray for the sick on Sunday, we pray for the sick on Monday. We don't just not cuss on Sunday, we don't cuss on Monday through Saturday. <laughs> it's not just a place to have a form of godliness, let's live it every day. I wanna open your Bibles this morning, I have several scriptures and passages and let's start with Matthew chapter five, verse eight, Paul, Jesus was uh, talking about the Beatitudes. One of the, and one, I'm not gonna cover all the Beatitudes this morning, but, he, but he, st he starts with one in verse eight. He says, Matthew five, he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Does anybody here want to see God? Amen. I'm not just looking to see God when we go to heaven. I want to see God every day in my life. I, I want to see God show up in my in my in my activity, and see and, and and feel His presence and recognize that that I can see God that has just gone before me and made a crooked path straight for me, that I can see God that He's gone before me and give and and placed His divine favor on a situation before I ever got there. Uh, my life is my life is full of stories where I've seen God work in so many ways that I have seen God. I've seen God since a small child, how he shows up to work on your behalf and on my behalf. God is not a respecter of persons. Uh, Romans, Romans 8, 31 says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Uh, and it's also been said, if God be for you, who cares who's against you? He says in Romans 8 that all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. How many of you have been called according to his purpose? I was listening to a preacher this week preach and he was talking about grace and he said, quit saying I'm a sinner saved by grace. You're a saint saved by grace. You've been redeemed and you're redeemed because you're saved by grace. Well, I'm just a poor little sinner. No, we're not. We, we're redeemed. That's under the blood. We're no longer a sinner. We're a child of God. That's what we sing about. I'm a child of God. So Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Philippians 4 and 8 says, My brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. And I want to preach this morning on this subject, walking in purity. How many of you want to walk in purity? Uh, and walking in, in, in purity is a, is a powerful, powerful thing. Many times when we think about purity, uh, it's related, we, we relate that to just sexual mature, uh, purity, which, which is very important. Uh, that, we, that we live in sexual purity, whether you're single or whether you're married. Unfortunately, we live in a society that don't know what sexual purity is about. Our society since the early 60s and to, to the present has changed the culture of our world where it's all backwards. And people are afraid to, well, you know, it's just our culture. It's just our culture. Listen, it's not the, Bib we, you don't want to live in America culture. You want to live in biblical culture. America culture will send you straight to hell. It'll, it'll deceive you. It'll make you to think that there are things that are okay with God that aren't okay with the scriptures that God talks about. Our, our, culture, our culture has us all backwards. You know, we, we, you know in, in, um, and I know this dates me, but it, 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 it's, still the, it's still the plain facts of purity. You know, I look back at my, at my grandparents. My grandparents didn't have a fancy we a wedding. They dated, and then they got married standing in a buggy with a preacher. Probably cost them a couple of dollars. 
You know, my parents, my parents, you know, my, my mom and dad never kissed before they got married. You know, in my generation, you didn't go to, you didn't have sex with your, with your girlfriend until you got married. And now we live in this day that, uh, day, it's like, it's like, it's like they even, uh, I was listening to something on the television the other day, and I think it was on the Family Feud, they asked this question, how many, how many times before, how many dates do you have before you sleep with, your girl, with the girl? And they said, one, one, one answer was two, two dates. One, and the number one answer was five. Well, how sick is that? And when, on the, you see, it gets real quiet when you start talking about this thing because this isn't our culture, and everybody's like, Pastor, don't stick your foot in your mouth. Don't stick your foot in your mouth. But so, so, so see, today, we, we live in a culture where people sleep together, and then they have babies, and then they decide that they're going to date before they get married. It's, it's, it's really the truth. It's like... We're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna live together, sleep together, have babies together, and then we're gonna we're gonna continue that because we need to we need to date to get to know each other. And then they decide to and, and then if they decide to get married or they, we just live in a crazy we, we just live in a crazy backward world, church. And you say, Pastor, I wish you wouldn't talk about this. This is not good. But God tells us, calls us to purity. And part of that purity is sexual purity. And, and if, I could just, if I could just say that, there's, that it's out of control in a lot of areas, but there's probably not one area in the America culture that is more out of control than sexual purity. Just, just, it, it just, uh, it's just there. And God has called us to sexual purity. And listen... He, he, he's, call, he's calling us, he's calling us to live in that purity so that we can go to heaven. This, this scripture is not in my notes, but I'll just read this to you. It'll scare the hell out of you. It wasn't in my notes, so I'm going to have to find it just for a moment, but I will find it, trust me. But, uh, well, um, David, find this for me and let me know when you find it. It's, uh, it's in Revelation. It's about, it's, it's in the first three or four chapters. Um. Please stand by. <laughs> you know where I'm looking? It's in Revelation. It's in... Um, uh, just Google it up. It'll, you'll find it with this one. It's, um, <laughs> did you, are, you, are you close to it? There we go. I was only 20 chapters away. <laughs> That's not it? Oh, here, I got it. It is 21. It is 21. Here we go. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor, you made me so nervous right there. <laughs> it's, um, it says, I, this is what John saw in heaven. He said, and I saw a new heaven, a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, 
prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. I'm getting there. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. <clears throat> I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And he's talking about how beautiful heaven's going to be. But verse 8, verse 8 says, but. How many of you know when there's a but, there's a tie together? But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, how plain can you get that it's not acceptable? That God wants us to have a pure heart, a pure mind. And, it, and I'm not here to talk about sexual matur- uh, purity only today. I'm just here to, to establish the fact with you that, that God has called us to, to, to several types of purity. Not just sexual purity, but uh, our heart must be pure. How many of you want? He said, blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. You need to have a pure heart. A pure heart. Uh, what, it, what does it mean to have a pure heart? A pure heart means you have pure motives. A, a pure heart means that you do things with, the, with the, 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 the right end in mind, that you're not just doing it for self-pleasure, you're not doing it for self-gain, you're doing it because your heart is pure and motivated to purity. A pure heart will cause you to tell the truth. A pure heart will, will, will direct your steps of, of, of things that you do in your activities. I'm not much of a, le- I don't, I, I'm not much of a, a legalistic preacher. I grew up on legalism. I hate it. That, that it was what we, what, we, what we did or didn't do made us a Christian. That's not true. It's our heart. A pure heart will, will cause you to cease from sin. A, a pure heart, when you have a pure heart towards God, it'll cause you to worship. A pure heart will cause you to want to be in the house of the Lord. A pure heart will cause you to want to do great things for the kingdom of God. A pure heart, when you have a pure heart, a total pure heart, it will be what Martin was talking about this morning. Your finances will line up around a pure heart. When you have a pure heart, it won't be just about making money for the new boat, making money for the new plane, making money for the, for the new house, making money for a new truck, a new car. A pure heart, when you have a pure heart, you'll begin to want to have money so you can see great things done for the kingdom of God. When you have a pure heart, you'll want to build churches in Zambia. When you have a pure heart, you'll want to build churches in, you know, Portia. I think she's going to be home in a few days, right? Uh, she put on Facebook that how many is following Portia on Facebook? Um, uh, she's over in Africa. I, 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 I tell you, she's, uh, she does a very good job of taking us on the journey with her if you're following her. I feel like every day I've gone into some village and preached with her because we, we invested money for her to go. Praise the Lord. But she put, on, she put on there the other day, she said, she said, she wasn't asking for money and she didn't even know what it was. But there, she said there's a church in, I think it was in Tanzania that, that, has a, that not, doesn't have a church, a place to worship. And I texted her back this week and I said, hey, Portia, find out how much it takes to build that church in, I think it's Tanzania. It's one of those African countries. It really doesn't matter what, what, what country or town. If there's a village that needs a church, our pure heart ought to see a desire to have it for them. Yes. Even though we didn't make the trip, I'm like, I, I mean, I'll just be honest with you. Before she even gets home, I don't know how much it'll cost. But I'm praying, God, give, 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 us, give us at spring first the ability to build a church in that place. Yes. That we leave a mark. Yes. You know, when we went to Zambia, uh, we didn't go with the intent to build a church. But when we got home... 
showing pictures of what they were worshiping in. Somebody in our church gave us money to build a church in, in Zambia, and now they have a, a, a nice, big, beautiful building, beautiful church. No more tents, no more dirt floors. And you know what's amazing? That, that only cost about $15,000. If we built churches like that here in the States, it would cost one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. dollars $200,000, $300,000. We can do so much around the world just for pennies on the dollar for what we are in America. But pure hearts, pure hearts will cause us to want to do things for the kingdom of God and help other people that, that are less, uh, less fortunate than us to have great things for the kingdom. Pure heart, pure mind, pure thoughts. God just, not just sexual maturity and purity, but a pure mind. How many of you know what a pure mind is? Pure thoughts. Not having evil thoughts. Not having negative thoughts. A pure mind will keep you from gossiping. Poke your neighbor and say, neighbor and say that means you. <laughs> a pure heart, a pure mind, a pure soul. How many of you want your soul to be Pure that you can live it openly before the Lord and you can be like David said in Psalms, search me, O God. See if there be any wicked way in me. God calls us to live a life that is holy and free from evil and free from wicked ways. If you believe it, say amen. amen. God has called us to be on fire for him, not judgmental with other people, not just not looking down on other people because maybe they don't know what to do. That's the danger in church is we, we, when we live a holy life, we sometimes get into the religious, religiosity and then when somebody comes to our church that's not reached a level of holiness or purity yet, they're just new to the kingdom of God. Sometimes if we're not careful, people will begin to judge or, or do something of that nature that makes that person feel unwelcome. And so what we have to do is live a holy life and yet be willing to set us to successfully uh, uh, accept unholy people into the church when they come to worship. Yeah. See, we want them to get good enough before they can worship. Well, the truth is, none of us were good enough before we started worshiping. Yeah. You know, in the church world, we sometimes, it's, it sometimes is that people's lives end up falling apart before they ever know to even look for Jesus. So we want to have, we want to have the holy church. I can, I can tell so many stories over my years of being in the ministry and, and, and pastoring and pe people judgmental and people that has problems, the people that know about problems. That I've, had, I've had religious people come to me and say, well, what are you going to do about this? And I look at them and I say, nothing. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit work it out. Well, you know. I, I, you can always tell you're good, fixing to get into it when the hand hits the hip. I'm one-handed this morning or I would be doing a two-hip. I'm just telling you, people, people get judgmental. People come into the church, maybe somebody knows them, and they say, well, you know what they've done. You know. I better shut up. <laughs> I'm just telling you, God has not called us to religious, judgmental spirits. He's called us to love people and, and, and love them where they are and let Jesus do a work in them. I've, I've had people that were doing things in the church and people some come up and say, you know what's happening with them? I said, no, I don't. Well, let me tell you. Well, you're going, now what are you going to do about it? I said, well, you know that's true. Well, I heard it. Well, that's hearsay. And in a court, how many of you know in a court, hearsay is not acceptable? Hearsay is not acceptable evidence. Did you see that? No. Did you talk to them? No. Have you asked them about it? No. But you know they are. No, I don't. I only know that you're gossiping on about information you don't know is true. I got into it with a lady one. This is 20 years ago and she's dead, so it don't matter. 
She's, she's not going to leave the church. She's already left. She ain't coming back. But she stood over in one of the aisles of this church and both hands on the hip. And she was talking about a man that happened to be singing on my praise team at the time. And she said, you know he's having an affair. I said, no, I don't know that. Well, I, and I said, how do you know that? She said, I heard it. <laughs> well, how'd you hear it? Well, she said, I heard it from this person and they heard it from that person. Now, what are you going to do about it? Hands, hands just, every once in a while, just. I said, I'm doing nothing. I'm doing nothing. Until, if, if, I, if I had the evidence of that, I, would, I wouldn't probably not let him do on the, sing on the praise team or play in the instruments. How many of you know Tommy Barnett? Tommy Barnett, Phoenix. He, was, he went to Phoenix, took a real religious church. I was, I was in that church. It was probably the most religious starch church I'd ever been in in my life. And he went there, and he, would, he had been used to having ministry where he's bringing in people from the street. And he wanted to do a Christmas pageant, but he couldn't get the religious folks to participate. So he was bringing in street people, and he brought... He brought in several busloads of them, and pretty soon he was bringing them in to do the Christmas pageant. And the religious people in the church were just having a fit. So they were like, what are you, you you've, got, you've got street people up, up on the stage singing the Christmas music. He said, you know what, I don't think, his, here was his answers to his church. He said, I don't think God cares if a sinner is singing a silent night. He's, and here was the word. If I can't get the church to do it, I'll get street people to do it. Because they're happy to sing about Jesus. And that may be a far fetch, but I'm just telling you, God has not called us to this religious, pious heart and spirit. He's called us to have a pure heart to win the lost in the dying world. And listen, you have to love the sinners where they are before you can win them to Jesus Christ. You don't need to go tell people how they're going to hell. You need to tell them how much Jesus loves them and cares for them because they already know they're going to hell the way they're living. They don't need, they don't need the, the, the condemnation. They need the love of Jesus. And, and here's what I know is that you preach it and teach it long enough and have it, in their, have it before them and see the love of Jesus in your life, it won't be long till they'll start giving up habits that need to be given up that's not our place to get rid of. Well, that's good preaching. God calls us to live a life that is holy, a life that is free from evil and is free from wicked ways. Nowhere in my, my Bible do I find where God sent me to judge others what they're doing. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, uh, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, noble, right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Proverbs 16, 2 says, all of, all of a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. <laughs> Have you ever got up in the morning in your prayers and say, God, weigh my motives? Search my, search my heart and see if there be any wicked way in me, but now search my motives, Lord. The things I'm going to do today, what are my motives? Psalms 19.9 says, the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteousness. Psalms 51.10 says, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. How many of you want a steadfast spirit within you? A steadfast, help me to be steady. That means to be consistent. Help me to, help me to not just walk in purity, but help me to be consistent in my purity. Psalms 119.9. In fact, I want to draw your attention to Psalms 119. It's a very lengthy chapter. A very lengthy chapter. It might be something you want to study this week. I was trying to 
figure maybe an assignment for you this week and all of the best I could do is just say over the next week, maybe two weeks because it's a, a long chapter. It might be good for you to, it's broken down into several sections then you could just take a section of that each day over the next couple of weeks and, and pour it in. And it's a, he, he starts out in 119, he says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. That means the, the lamp is a stationary light. A, a lamp shows you where you are. A light shows you where you're going. He says, uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It will show you where you are. And it is a light unto your pathway. It will determine how you go. We, we use lamps in our living room to, because, because they, they, they are stationary and help us there. But we, if we're going to go on a path in the, in the dark of a forest, we take a flashlight because it lights up the pathway. And the more lumen uh, that it has, the better. But uh, we, 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 it is a light that is to our pathway. How many of you need a light for your pathway this week? You know, we come on, church. We preach, we preach the word of God. But when you go out in the world this day, this week, you've got certain. Every person in here has different circumstances, different situations, different different trials, different different things. Some of you've got people coming at you, people that that uh, that that hate you, people that revile you. That that you they, they, there's nothing you could say that would make them. You know, it's like you say left, they say right. You say up, they say down. How many of you have had those people in your life? Amen. Nothing you can do. I, we, we all have people that, uh, that, that just you can't get along with. Anybody? I'm the only one with my hand up. I guess that's me. I got people that don't like me. I got people that don't get along with me. And, and I've come to the conclusion in life, and I'm pretty peaceable, but guy, but I've come to the conclusion in life that, hey, you know what? We're not going to make them people happy. In fact, I've got a new saying. It says, when people show you who they are, it's probably better just to believe them. <laughs> just believe them. You don't have to be friends with everybody, even if you used to be friends. See, see, we got the, sometimes even, I've, I've had this mentality as a pastor that well, I got to do everything, see if I can make up with them, make peace with them. Some people don't want to make up with you. They just want to use you. They don't want to be your friend. They just want what you got. They want, they want what, they want you to give them something that they haven't earned. And so the best thing you can do to them is love them, be kind to them, be friendly with them, be peaceful with them. And it don't mean you have to have dinner with them today. See, we get this mindset that, well, if we're going to get along with everybody, we got, to, we got to have them to my house, have them over here, go do this. No. To turn them loose. There's an old saying, if you turn a, if you turn a bird loose and if he goes, comes back, then he's your bird. But if he don't, let him go. Just a thought. <laughs> Psalms 119 says, I will, I will hide his word in my heart that I might not sin against him. As we live in the evil day that we live in, we just need to have a pure heart. We need to be the ones out there showing kindness. We need to be the ones out there showing peace. We need to be the ones out there that's not showing panic. We need to be the ones out there that says, hey, we're not afraid to fight. We're, we're not, we're not, you know, I'm not afraid to stand alone. Psalms 119.9 says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word was the answer. But by living according to God's word, your word is God's word. Romans 13, 14 says, says, 13, 14 says, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Think about God. Titus chapter two, verse five says, be self-controlled and pure. Be, be busy at home, be kind and be subject to the, to, he, she was talking to wives here. He was talking to wives. He says, be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. 
In 2 Corinthians 6, 6 and 7, he says, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love and truthful speech, and in the power of God with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left. David was preaching last week about not blowing up at people. I, I'm paraphrasing that a little bit, but, but uh, uh, you know, not to, as, as, as Christians, being kind, not just, you know, we get, not getting demanding of people. And he was talking about our <coughs> people that wait upon us in restaurants. And I don't know about you, but how many of you had opportunities to blow up to somebody this week if you'd wanted to? Is that a yes? <laughs> Wasn't sure how to read that. <laughs> Philippians 2, 14 and 15 says, do everything without grumbling or arguing. Oh. 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 Grumbling. Any grumblers in the house? Thought I saw a hand, but it was just something else. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Come on. How many of us have a tendency to grumble? Oh, I know. Maybe we need to get some automatic chair lifts for arms. You know? <laughs> Push it. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Helping the preacher preach. Push, push the right hand. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Hey, you get... You, you, get, you, get this, you get to test this uh, almost on a daily basis. If you have to call some utility company or whatever, you know, it's just, if you call AT&T, th they'll make you go cross-eyed. <laughs> Hi, I'm an automated, I'm an automated computer. <laughs> Representative. I know you want to speak to a representative, but if you'll let me know what you talk, I'll direct your call. <laughs> representative. <laughs> you can test me on this to see if I'm right. You call AT&T, whether it's for your internet or your phone, and this isn't a bad thing about AT&T, it's just AT&T. When you're the only one in town, you, you can do what you want, I guess, but, you know. I challenge you to call, call, uh, call utilities and get off the phone within 45 minutes to an hour because it'll take you 30 to find the rep and you'll probably call back three to four times. And it's not just AT&T. It's the world we live in. I, I, I finally just got in my car the other day and went down to the company that I was talk, trying to talk to because I had gone th I'd gone through eight phone calls and eight loops and leave a message and we'll call you back. Well, I left one two weeks ago and I still hadn't gotten the call. And boy, I have to get, get into this scripture. Do not grumble and argue and complain. <laughs> be, walk in and be nice, Pastor Hogan. You know how hard it is to walk in and be nice and not just tell them off? What David was talking about, it's like... Am I the only one that has those conversations, calls, you know? And then you get somebody that reads from a script. Thank you very much. I am here to help you. I understand your problem. My name, my, my name is John. And you know it's not John. And you know it ain't Cindy. Thank you for that response. They go through the script again. 
And I, that's when I have to say, Lord, help me not to do, help me to do everything without grumbling or arguing. Help me to be kind so that, so that I can become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault. If you want to test our sermon, call at and this week. <laughs> or you can call Vivant Security System or you can call, you can call, in, you can call any, call any utility you choose. There's one problem I've been trying to resolve with a utility for five years, gospel truth. Five years steadily, I, I, I could say I've been trying to solve it 10. And I finally came to the, to the conclusion they don't even have a place in Houston that I can go to their place. It's all by phone or nothing. They do not have a physical place where you can go. We live in a weird world. And I'm going somewhere with this. We live in a weird world and it's not going to get any better until Jesus comes. Church, you have to know who you are in Christ and you've got to be strong enough to walk in holiness and walk in purity and stay calm like David said last week and live with a pure heart, be blameless It's part of the test. It's part of the test in the last day. So we have to be, we have to really work at it. Can you say amen? amen. We have to really work at it, being, having a pure heart. Psalms 24, verse three and four says, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false God. Luke chapter 11 talks about your eye is the lamp of your body. And when your eyes are healthy, your whole body also is full of light. But when they are unhealthy, your body also is full of darkness. See to it then that the light within you is not darkness. Whew, that's a powerful passage. He tells us we're the light of the world. And, and, and we're living in a dark society. We're living in a dark world. We're, we're living in a world that it, we're tested on a daily basis and over things like grumbling and complaining and murmuring. And we're just so spoiled. But God has called us, God has called us to win the loss. And we're not going to do it with our mouth being grumbling. We just can't. And I know I've told the story before, but you know that bumper sticker that says, honk if you love Jesus. I tried it one time. I tried that at Shepherd in Little York. I tried it and walked up. It says, honk if you love Jesus. I honked. And uh, when I honked, I got the, I got the, I got a finger. And in the next light, I pulled up beside him. My window was down and and I pulled up beside him and he, he cussed and said, what the blank you want? I said, I didn't want to eat anything. The bumper sticker says, honk if you love Jesus. And he goes, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> to which I responded, too late. going to put a bumper sticker on your car about loving Jesus, you better be in love with Jesus because it's going to get tested in Houston, Texas. <laughs> you better start praying when you leave home to have a pure heart as you drive. Because we live in a society where everybody wants to be in front of you. We live, we live in a society where you turn your blinker on and they'll speed up to block you. My, mom, my wife, not my mom, my wife asked me the other day, she says, why don't you use your blinker? And I said, because I want to get over before they know I'm going. <laughs> Anybody? Seriously, you get, on, you get on the freeway, somebody's behind you, you're laying in, you got to get over. They start passing you before you're clear to go. And then they block you off. I, I wonder, 
I wonder what would happen if everybody in spring church today, we would just start a phenomenon. We'd let everybody else go first. Yeah. <laughs> now, you're one to talk. You're the one wanting to always go first. No, I'm just kidding. You, you, you do drive fast, though. <laughs> Come on. I'm reluctant to ask you to go do that because I don't want to have any funerals this week because <laughs> you almost have to drive in such a way to be defensive that you don't get killed. <laughs> Trying to be kind and got run over. <laughs> Trying to be pure in heart and got smashed on the freeway. <laughs> Philippians. 1, 9 through 11, Paul's prayer says, this is my prayer, that you, your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. 2 Corinthians 6, Paul was writing in verse 4, he said, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, distresses, he said, even in beatings, imprisonments and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience and kindness in the Holy Spirit and sincere love. Church, we have a big task in, in, the, in, the, in the age we're living in. Our church not only needs to be alive and enthusiastic, we need to be so on fire for the Lord. And we need to be so full of love and so full of kindness. And we need to, we need to take on the approach of when people are making mistakes around us that we recognize that, hey, they're having a bad day and chip in and help them to be better. You say, Pastor, it's impossible. Well... God only wants you to do your part. You're not responsible for the other person. Only what you do. God is doing some great things in our church. School of Ministry on Tuesday nights has revolutionized people in our church to get, to get involved. If, you're, if there's any way some of you have, that have not gone through School of Ministry could get involved with School of Ministry, I would tell you it will change your life. I can, prom I can tell you it may be the greatest one thing that's happened in our church, and our church has had some great events. We've had some great missions projects. We've had some great outreaches. We've had some great things, but I'm not sure as far as discipleship, as if school of ministry is not the best thing that's ever happened to our church. It's taking people, it's taking people to levels of prayer, to levels of, 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 of the kingdom work. That it's, it's taking people, uh, and I don't, I don't want to call people out because there's so many, but I, I was at Freedom Weekend the other day and watching, watching people that were leading. And we don't, uh, I speak at it, David speaks at it, but we let laity lead it. And, and, and God is doing so much in Freedom Weekends. And I was watching, watching some of our laity that's going through that and, and, and watching, watching them start out at 7 o'clock in the morning before anybody else goes in, watching them in the room, praying for the people that's coming through that day. And I'm telling you, my heart, well, well, I told one of the guys this morning, I said, hey, you have no clue how God's taking you to a level in prayer. And I know it's because of school of ministry. And I just challenge you, if you hadn't gotten involved with this, I can't do one more thing. I challenge you. Make, make some sacrifices because it will change. Not on, it's not only changing our church, it's changing people's lives. Yeah. It's, it's changing people's ministry. It's taking them to levels of ministry. God wants you to have a pure heart, a pure mind, a pure heart. How many of you want our church to be a lighthouse for the kingdom of God? Yeah. Let it not just be a place where we meet on Sunday. Let it not just be a place where we meet and eat or meet and greet or just at a coffee shop. But hey, let us, let us be a church that's so on fire for God that we have pure hearts, pure motives, 
But sometimes we just, when, we're, we're, when we're, the humanity side of us just comes up, that we can just suck it up and suck it in and say, God, I need your help to keep me pure. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can I tell you this? If you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, things will hurt you. Anybody in the church ever been hurt? So many people say, well, I didn't, no, I don't go to church anymore. I got hurt. Well, bless your heart. There's two kinds of people in the church. Those that's been hurt. Those that's going to get hurt. There's two types of football players. Those that's been hurt. Those that's going to get hurt. The only difference about the football team is that they know it before the game starts and they park an ambulance at the end of the field. What a great expectation to walk out of the tunnel with. There's the ambulance. Pray you're not on it today. I can just imagine if we parked an ambulance in front of the church. I, I can tell you what will happen. I can tell you what will happen because we at, at MDO on Tuesdays and Thursdays, sometimes for the kids, they'll bring a policeman over, the, the, or the, and some days they bring the fire truck. And I drove a, I, when I drive up and see the police car or the fire truck, I just reach down and turn my phone off because everybody goes by church. Hey, Pastor, what's happening at the church? Oh, fire department. <laughs> Where's the fire? What burnt? Nothing, the kids are just climbing on the fire truck. Have we been robbed? I saw a policeman there. Isn't that our nature? That's why you can't get to work in the morning. They, 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 they have a wreck on the other side of the freeway and it clogs up this side because everybody's got to see. Grumbling, complaining, purity of heart. I've been all over the place this morning. Psalms 24, 1 to 4. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas, established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountains of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol... Or swear by false gods. How many of you want to have a pure heart? Could, could you just bow your heads for a moment? I'm going to have David to come. He's going to uh, lead us in communion. But would you just pray this prayer with me? Can I just lead you in a prayer? Lord, search me. Would you just say that out loud with me? Lord, search my heart. Create a clean heart in me. See if there be any wicked way in me. Change my heart. Change my attitude. Change my thoughts. If you're here today and you've come for the first time or the, been here many times, if you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, but you're looking for answers, you're looking for solutions, I'm here to tell you today, Jesus Christ is your answer. He loves you. He died for you. He's been waiting on you. Every head's bowed and every eye's closed. If you need to know the Lord Jesus, would you say this prayer with us? We'll say it with you together as a congregation. Say it with me, church. Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. Cleanse me of wicked ways. Be the Lord of my life, the Savior of my soul. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed at the cross of Calvary for my sins. And I ask you to be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, our ushers are going to come through the aisle. If you didn't get a communion cup when you came in, just raise your hand and we'll make sure that you get one. If you're new to our church, we do open communion. So we want everybody to participate, young and old. If you've got your kids in here with you today, get them their own cup too and help them. Here at our church, we don't take this, this moment lightly. 
this is not a this is not a religious act that we're doing this morning. We're not just remembering what Jesus did. We are renewing a covenant with him. Every time that we eat the bread, take the, take the cup, we are renewing the covenant with Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father. Every, every covenant is sealed with a meal. And I don't have time to go through all of the different ones all through the Old Testament. Abraham, Moses, David. I was reading this morning about Elijah. He's weary from the, the journey. The angel of the Lord shows up and makes a meal for him and tells him, hey, you've got to get up, eat this food, drink this. And it says, and Elijah went in the strength of that meal for 40 days. Today, in Jesus' name, as we take the cup and eat the bread today and do, do communion together, we're gonna go, you are gonna go in the strength of the Lord. You're renewing your strength today. We're renewing the favor of the Lord on your life today. We're not just remembering what Jesus did. That is part of it, but it's so much more than that. Let's, if you can get yours open, they make these things childproof. Once you get yours open, take the, the cracker and hold it in your hand. I want you to close your eyes for a second. And I want, you, I want us just for a moment to walk the path of what Jesus did for us. The Bible says that after supper, he took the bread, took the cup, but Jesus said, this is my body that's broken for you. So would you just close your eyes? I want you to picture Jesus taking, taking stripes on his back so that you could be healed. He wasn't just being punished. He was taking upon himself our punishment. Not just for our sin, but for our sickness as well. By his stripes, we were healed while he was taking those stripes. See what it must have looked like. Picture for a moment. What, is it, what, is it, what did it sound like? Have you ever thought of what it would have sounded like to hear Jesus cry? as he was taking stripes for you and me. I don't know that I've ever thought about that. What was it like? Picture him having a crown of thorns being driven into his head. And then they make him carry his cross. Picture, follow in your mind. Jesus walking down that road and carrying that cross for you. They get to the top of the hill, they lay the cross down. Picture Jesus being thrown on that cross and then they're now nailing his hands and his feet and they're doing that. He, he, he said, Nobody takes my life. I willingly lay it down. And he did that for you. Can we just thank him for giving his body today? Jesus, thank you that you took the stripes. 
that you gave your body on the cross so that, so that we didn't have to have eternal punishment. Jesus, thank you for giving your body. Thank you that you took the stripes so that we could be healed. I pray right now, Lord, as we partake of this communion, I thank you that, that people are even gonna be healed in this moment as we, as we in, engage this moment of moments doing communion. Lord, I, I pray that there would be a fresh revelation of healing and faith would just rise in the room right now. Lord, we remember, we remember you as we take the bread together. Let's do that. Colossians 1.27 says, the glorious mystery of the gospel is revealed in this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. How is Christ in you? His life is in you. Romans 8.11 says, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he quickens your mortal body. So his life is in, if you believe in Jesus, his life is in you. Leviticus chapter 22, I think says that, I think it's 22 verse 17. I, I may be wrong, but it says that life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. So why do we drink juice? Well, because it would be weird if we were actually just drinking blood here, right? but the wine represents, this is a physical act, a physical prophetic act that we do of faith. And by faith, we declare that the juice is the, the blood of Jesus, the life, his life is in me. Could Jesus have ever been sick? And his life is in you. That realization will help you. Our nature, we were, nothing you ever did made you a sinner. You were born into sin. But Jesus redeems us and literally changes our sin DNA and gives us his. That's great news. Good news. Can we just thank him today for his blood that cleanses us, redeems us, and causes us to walk free today. Let's pray and thank, thank him for giving his blood. Jesus, thank you that your blood was poured out in order to redeem us. Lord, I thank you that as we take this cup today, we recognize that your life comes into ours. Jesus, we pray that we would walk worthy of you living in us. And we thank you today for washing our sins away and causing us to be completely redeemed from every curse. And I thank you that as we take this, every oppression of the devil that would try to come after these people and their families, we declare it broken today by the blood of Jesus. Every curse is broken. I thank you that today is the moment of moments for turnaround encounters as we engage a covenant relationship with you by your blood, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take the cup together. Pastor Dad, it was good to have you back up here today. Yeah, we miss you when you're, when you're not up here. I mean, I enjoy it because I get to preach, and I love that, but it was good to have you back. The tuna, back in the, in the pulpit today. 
Isn't it awesome that we have a pastor that's not afraid to still hold the line on walking in holiness? I love that. We have to hear that. I, you know what I loved about today? That we have a pastor that's willing to hold the line on holiness and he preaches holiness like hard line. I mean, we all talk about the fire brimstone preachers, like he read the scripture about fire brimstone and then preached even hotter on not judging people. I love that. I, I love that. We need that. Society needs that. Culture needs that. I want you to stand with me today and I'm going to ask Daryl Brooks to come down uh, today. Our church celebrates what Paul taught in the New Testament, what the, the New Testament church, what they were experiencing. 1 Corinthians 14 tells us, gives us instructions on how to handle when the Holy Spirit's speaking something. Uh, there's different gifts and ministries of the Holy Spirit. I'm not gonna teach all of those here today, but the Lord moves on people and, and gives them words that are for the corporate body. And uh, Daryl Brooks, if you don't know this guy, he's just a gem and just loves the Lord so much. And the Lord's, the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to him. I love it, I'll be up here preaching and sometimes I look back there and uh, Daryl, he'll just, the Holy Spirit will hit him and he's just back there weeping and then and praying. He prays the whole time during our service. He has such a tender heart for the Lord. and. Uh, he came to us and he, I don't know if this is a, a vision or just a, a word, but uh, about, about gold. And so we make room, we make room for the Holy Spirit to be able to speak at our church. And I love this. We do it in a way where it doesn't, isn't out of order and makes everybody uncomfortable. All right, would you just lift your hands to the Lord and let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we wanna hear from you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you speak. I thank you for Daryl Brooks and people in our church like him that are, that are willing to be a vessel. We thank you for anointing, confidence, and Holy Spirit, we wanna hear what, what you're saying to us today. Lord, we pray that you would prepare our hearts to receive whatever, whatever it is that you're speaking. And we say we're listening. Praise God. I want everybody to know this message came to me in praise and worship. Jesus says that from the beginning that you endeavored and you purposed your heart to seek me and you purposed your heart to be holy and you purposed your heart for what I would have for you and you purposed your heart for the presence, for my presence in your church. From that day, I have watched you grow. I have watched you daily. I've watched everything that you do. And I'll tell you, church, that you have, you have dug the depths and you have found some gold. You have found nuggets. And some of the nuggets were larger than the others. But I'll tell you, church, that the truth is that the day is coming that you're gonna dig so deep that you're gonna hit, you're gonna hit the main line. You're gonna hit pure gold. And that day is coming for this church. And I tell you this day, church, it's not that far away. So get yourself bigger shovels, get your hearts set right. And let's make sure that we're going for 24 karat gold. Yes, yes Lord, thank you, Jesus. We praise you so much for that word. Amen. Amen. How many of you are digging for more? That's us. That's us. As we close today, I want us to corporately read this, uh, the 23rd Psalm together. Can you guys put that uh, up on the screen? And we're gonna all read this together. I'm gonna pray the, and declare the favor of the Lord over your life and then you're out of here. Let's read this together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, in Jesus' name, we declare that surely goodness and mercy shall follow these people this week and everything that they do. I pray that it would be turnaround, turnaround encounters in their jobs. Lord, divine favor in everything that they set their hand to do. Bless their children, bless their health. We declare them healthy and whole in Jesus' name. Amen. And so shall it be. We love you. We're going to be here praying tonight from 6 to 7 o'clock. Corporate prayer is one of the funnest things that we do at this church. Be here at 6. We'll pray from 6 to 7. And we'll see you then.